Two Chairs No Waiting, episode number 139, Aunt B. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at weaversdepartmentstore.com. Drop by Weavers and you'll find all kinds of wonderful, wonderful Mayberry items. You just got to go over there and look around. They're all there. You got the uh, 50th anniversary DVD set. Drop by weaversdepartmentstore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you each week by donations from listeners just like you. The executive producer of Two Chairs No Waiting, episode number 139, is Jay Hicks. So, hey, Jay, we appreciate it, and thanks for your support. Hello, everybody. I'm Alan Newsom, your host for Two Chairs No Waiting, and it's great to have you here in Mayberry with me again. Uh, wow, we've uh, had a great week. I've been down in Gordo, Alabama this past weekend at Mule Days. It was just Floyd. Floyd was the only one that showed up, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Barney couldn't make it, but uh, he deputized Floyd, so everything was all right. But, wow, it was warm. Folks, uh, if you get got an event anywhere in your area, try to go, because I think you'll have a lot of fun. You'll meet uh, a lot of other Mayberry fans, and you'll be able to come up and say hi to, to one of the tribute artists, because I know we'd enjoy getting to meet you. Anyway, uh, tonight's episode is about Aunt B. Uh, you guys know Aunt B. It's uh, Francis Bavier. She's known to everybody around Mayberry as Aunt B. Everybody called her Aunt B. And uh, in 1972, Francis retired from acting and moved to Siler City, North Carolina. So I don't know if you guys know where Siler City is, but it is uh, it's in North Carolina. Just uh, it's south, I guess southeast of Mount Airy, North Carolina, uh, probably about an hour and a half or so, maybe, maybe something like that. So if you're ever in the Mount Airy area, you can drop by Siler City and you can go and see uh, Aunt B's home and Will and, and things like that while you're there. But she retired in 1972 and moved to Siler City uh, and because she said she was from New York City, but she said she just fell in love with North Carolina and all the pretty trees and roads is what she had said in an interview. So in this episode, we're going to be hearing from an interview that was done uh, called, from Carolina Camera by reporter Bill Ballard. This was done not too long after she had moved to North Carolina after retiring uh, from, uh, from acting. Uh, now, I say from acting. That's not quite true. She, she retired in 72, and then I believe it was 74 she went back and filmed Benji. But uh, this was between the, her retirement and going back and filming uh, Benji. So let's uh, let's go ahead and hear from uh, Francis and uh, Bill Ballard is the interviewer, and uh, let's hear from them. Francis Barbier was an actress for fifty years. Ten of them as television's Aunt B, that lovable lady who made life pleasant for all of Mayberry. But Aunt B did not make life pleasant for Francis Barbier. For one thing, she and Andy Griffith did didn't get along, rarely speaking to one another. Secondly, Francis Barbier, as an actress, got tired of cooking all that chicken and washing all those dishes. So when she came to Siler City, it was not to find Aunt B. No, it's the other way around. <laughs> I had had played Aunt B for ten years, and... It's very, very difficult for an actress or an actor to create a role and be so identified that you as a person no longer exist and all the recognition you get is for a part that's created on the screen. The people here in Siler City expect you to act and react the way Aunt B would. Yes, I think so, and I think they're disappointed if I destroy the image. Is Siler City that you live in now, anything at all like the Mayberry of the television scripts? Very, very much. Great deal of it. When you go shopping down the street, do the people you meet tell you that North Carolinians are, are not like they are portrayed on television? No. Absolutely, as far as they're concerned, Mayberry was absolutely authentic. It was almost as if they, their own family were being filmed, their own situations. They saw no difference, and I, I, uh, I give Andy Griffith credit for the whole, uh, not for the technical or for the structural uh, value of the show, 
But for all of the memory, uh, you know, it, it wasn't so long ago he was here, he knows these people. And he would know whether an actor was right on the right track, and it would be no, no, no. And he knew when it was right, and that was invaluable. And uh, he'd remember situations. And it had a consistent kind of humor from beginning to end. Can you recall the script, the, the storyline, the one that may have been a favorite of the one that you did in 10 years? Was there a one particular favorite show? Yes, there was. It was my, my, my desire to uh, convince Andy that um, he should marry and that if I, did, if I married, I would give Andy an opportunity to not feel responsible about me or leaving me. And my involvement with a man who was a cleaning man in the town and the misery I suffered, but anything not to put Andy in this position to free him from his obligation. Some of your friends in Mayberry were always trying to get a little romance involved in Aunt B's life. Have you had any of the same things here in Siler City? Oh. <laughs> no, they haven't, they haven't confused me to that extent. They see a 70-year-old lady and think she probably wants to be alone. And uh, they're, they're having a problem of trying to be friendly and show their friendliness and at the same time not intrude. And it makes it very difficult for them. And a uh, great many of them just... Uh, I've had many, many Christmas cards and gifts, and uh, it, it was a little difficult adjustment for me when I first came. I, I have a great deal to learn from Silo City and from North Carolina. It's an entirely different new way of life, and at 70, I think if you still keep trying to change and adjust, your mind stays a little more alert, so if I can match up with any of the 85-year-olds and 90-year-olds I've met be fortunate, smart, clear-headed. As I can be. That's about I'm the way honest. Aunt B you know, would have put it. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was, uh, I found that on YouTube, and there will be a link in the show notes so that you can go and watch the actual video of that interview. Uh, because it's uh, it's neat to see her. So they uh, are sitting there in, uh, I believe it may be her home. They're actually interviewing her. I'm not sure. I, I couldn't tell you for certain. But uh, they talked about in that uh, during that interview about her and Andy not getting along. Well, that is something that has been mentioned before, and people have talked about. And and, and it it was it was true. I believe they didn't get along that well, and she was a little difficult at times on the set according to what i was told but that said andy griffith addressed the fact that the two sometimes clashed during uh during the series he he talked about it on let me get this right on larry king live on in april uh, on april the 24th in 1998 he was doing an interview and he said that francis had phoned him about four months before she passed away and she said she was deeply sorry for being difficult during the series run so they they uh ended on uh, very good terms they are good terms you know so uh so you know she was uh, a nice lady george Lindsay's talked about her uh often and so is rodney dillard talked about uh he met her one night at the uh rodney did he was at the vet i believe is where he was the veterinarian and he had his little dog with him and aunt b had to come in. I say Aunt B. Francis Bavier had came uh, came in the uh, vet's office and was standing there talking to Rodney. Oh, Rodney, it's so good to see you. And uh, and then he Rodney was talking to her and smiling. And then all of a sudden she got this look on her face, like oh oh oh, you know, or like surprise and shock. And <laughs> Rodney looked down, and his dog was uh, urinating on Francis's foot. So <laughs> anyway. It's a funny story if you think about Aunt B standing there talking to Rodney Dillard, the darling boy, and the dog starts lifting his leg there on Aunt B's leg. That's, uh, anyway, funny story. She was nice to him and uh, didn't, <laughs> didn't do anything except react. You know, what do you do? So, anyway, Frances Bavier, a great lady. Wow, did she take good care of Andy and Opie throughout the entire run of the series? And... That's all I can say. Uh, sadly, uh, she passed away uh, on, uh, let's see, on December 6th, 1989 is when she passed away. 
Uh, she was born December 14th in 1902 and passed away December 6th, 1989. She was 86 years old when she passed away. And she had lived in her home there in uh, Siler City for, yeah, I think it was, uh, well, since the 70s, since the early 70s. So you can figure that out since about 72. So that's about 17 years she lived there in Siler City. So, and her home was uh, up for sale, I believe it was last year, and was bought. So, anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we got uh, we got one little bit of feedback I wanted to pass along to you. And uh, this is from Joe Gritton. Now, if you'll remember, I did a podcast uh, a few weeks uh, back about Poor Butterfly. I don't know if you remember that, but it was episode number 132. Uh, was the episode, and you can go back and listen to it. But in that... Uh, in that, we had uh, had this, uh, this song. So that's Poor Butterfly. So let me just turn it down and let it play in the background as I read this. Because Joe says, Alan, I watched your latest Two Chairs No Waiting podcast this morning. This was back in April when he watched it. He says... As I'm driving to the doctor's office, I had poor butterfly in my head. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Laying on the exam table, all I could hear was the Benny Goodman version. It was rather soothing. As I'm driving home, the same music was playing in my head. Poor butterfly. You know, I started bobbing my head a little bit, like you do on the podcast. He watches the video, I guess. Usually when that happens, my daughter says, Dad, stop. But I was alone. Now I suddenly have an urge to grill hamburgers tonight, and if I burn them, I'll be dreaming of poor butterfly. I know, don't blame Floyd. <laughs> I have a feeling I'm going to do a Warren and sleepwalk dance tonight with the strains of poor butterfly in my head. Hopefully I don't run into a, power, a flower pot and cold cock myself. <laughs> Cutting the end. The untrained voice, Joe Gritton. <laughs> uh, so, folks, if you didn't hear that podcast episode, go and listen. You'll find out why poor Butterfly was stuck in Joe's head. And Joe, sorry about that. I got, I had him stuck in my head and went around humming it for a week. <laughs> Probably will now, too, because we're listening to it again. Folks, I would love to hear from you, just like we heard from Joe. I kind of like this talking over the music. <laughs> Give me a call at 888-684-8415. And leave your comments. Let us hear what you think about the podcast, this episode with Aunt B, or the previous episode. I'd love to hear from you. You can also email me at floyd at imayberry.com. You can drop by twochairsnowaiting.com and leave a message there as well. And while you're at it, you could drop by over at Facebook and leave a message there on our Facebook website as well. So, folks, there's all kinds of ways to get in touch with me. And, hey, I'm trying to help you guys starting to get in touch with each other a little better. I have a Twitter account. And if you go to twochairsnowaiting.com and you scroll down a little bit, you'll see right down there it says follow me on Twitter. If you do that, if you happen to be on Twitter... I'll add you to the list of listeners that are on uh, that are on Twitter, and so that we can keep up with one another. So I'm trying to help you guys be able to talk with one another, uh, not just during the podcast. So I definitely want to encourage that. I also want to encourage you to go over to Miss Crump's Blackboard. At Miss Crump's Blackboard, we have created a, uh, I guess a a board a black a board there that you can talk on called Podcast About Mayberry, where you can talk about two chairs no waiting, or you can talk about Burke on Mayberry. Uh, either of those podcasts we would love to be able to just continue this conversation more than just this once a week that we're on the podcast we can talk off, off uh, online there at, at any of those places so folks i'd love to hear from you i'd love to be able to get to know you better and just enjoy each other's company because isn't that what mayberry's all about hey i hope i hope you'll do that and uh, folks Again, I want to thank you for just coming and spending some time with me in Mayberry. And I hope I see you online at some of these other places as well. So, until next week, we'll see you guys next week on Two Chairs No Waiting, your Mayberry podcast. Night, folks. <laughs> <laughs>